For being such a small line, the Lake Erie, Franklin, and Clarion Railroad reporting marks LEF became somewhat well-known in its later years as numerous freight equipment from boxcars to hoppers advertised the company's name and logo. Perhaps surprising given the Lake Erie, Franklin, and Clarion Railroad's small size is that it remained a mostly profitable company from the 1920s onward except for the Great Depression years through 1935. The Lake Erie, Franklin, and Clarion's roots go back to 1903 when the Pittsburgh, Somerville, and Clarion Railroad started building its line from a connection with the Pennsylvania Railroad at Somerville, Pennsylvania to the town of Clarion about 15 miles northwest. Clarion was originally served by a narrow gauge branch of the Buffalo, Rochester, and Pittsburgh, the B&O, but the BRMP's line was abandoned after residents refused to pay the railroad for repairs to a spindly trestle critical to the line paving the way for a new railroad to serve the town. The treasure initially sought in this area was timber, but in the early 1900s it became apparent that the area's coal was a commodity in demand. A second interchange on the south end was opened up at Sutton with the Lakeshore and Michigan Southern, later the New York Central. A branch was also built from Strattonville up Mills Creek and its rich timber, but this line was plagued by tight curves and was abandoned. In 1912, the railroad was reorganized as the Pittsburgh, Clarion, and Franklin Railroad, and in 1913, the line was merged with the Pennsylvania Northern and the Pennsylvania Southern, which owned portions of the line's property to form the Lake Erie, Franklin, and Clarion, a lofty title including two areas never served by the LEFNC. At its high point, the LEFNC operated about 32 miles of track, including branches. The LEFNC offered passenger service between Clarion and Somerville up until 1942 and also Franklin, Pennsylvania via trackage rights over the New York Central until 1924. In the 1930s and 40s, the LEFNC was home to several coal loaders and was operated with a fleet of 5-6 to six ex Bessemer and Lake Erie steam locomotives. The LEFNC ordered its first diesels in 1949, a pair of Alco RS1s, and the line was completely dieselized in 1950. Coal traffic ebbed and flowed, but the LEFNC had many more years operating in the black than in the red. Coal tonnage was augmented by a few local industries, including a glass plant at Clarion, a brick plant at Somerville, an explosive distributor, and two lumber yards, and a mattress factory. Additionally, the LEFNC had a fleet of several hundred hoppers and later boxcars, and it earned sizable per diem revenue. Interchange partners changed over the years as the New York Central and Pennsylvania merged into the Penn Central and later Conrail. In the 1990s, the Pittsburgh and Shawmut's owner purchased the former New York Central line through Sutton and operated it as the Mount Laurel Railroad. In the 1990s, the LEFNC was down to just one coal loader, and once that operation shut down around 1993, so did the LEFNC. In its late era of operations, its traffic consisted of brick, sand, glass, coal, and lumber. Additionally, it picked up new motor power in the 1970s, which included two EMD SW1500s and later four newer MP15 DCs. It was the loss of coal mines in the 1980s and early 1990s that severely hurt the railroad and finally forced it to shut down. The Interstate Commerce Commission granted the abandonment on September 17, 1992, and the railroad's final day of operations occurred on January 5, 1993. Today, if one is lucky, you can still find LEFNC painted equipment in service, particularly east of the Mississippi River. The Trains 21, call me AC.